Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out this week's sermon. We hope that it encourages you today. Now, as you're watching this, be sure to like this video, comment down below so we can connect with you, and also subscribe so you can be updated with the latest and previous messages. We hope that you enjoy this message. Welcome to Live Alive Church. If you're new and visiting with us for the first time, we're so honored and glad that you're here with us. If you're watching us online as well, thank you for being here. We'd love to welcome our online guests as well as those in the room today. So for all of us here today, why don't we just give those online a great round of applause saying thank you wherever you are for listening and being a part and, and joining us hopefully soon here in at Live the Life. And we love our visitors and if you are visiting with us in the room today for the first time, be sure and uh, let us stay around long enough for us to get to know you, shake your hand, say hello. Uh, we love to do that here. We've been in this series uh, entitled Overflow, and this is actually our fifth week that we've been talking about that. And really the, the uh, built on the foundation, if you will, of the authority of the kingdom of God. How many of you know that God has all authority both in heaven and earth? Now, how many of you know that God has even given you and I the authority here on this earth? We have been given that authority. Are you ready to make sure and understand every aspect of that authority in your life today? And so uh, if you're watching us online, we want you to know that this message is for you today too. We want you to go, uh, if you're watching, tag us somehow on uh, whatever venue you're using, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or whatever, uh, say hello to us so that we can get back with you. We'd love to connect with you as well. And uh, if, you got, if you were able to see online this week or past week on Wednesday, we did an LTL Live midweek thing, and we talked about the authority of God through the financial area of your life. How many of you know that God wants to bless you? God wants to bless you. Turn to that person next to you and say, God has a blessing for you. He does. He has a blessing for each and every one of us in our lives today. And it's through that authority that we recognize or then and accept the blessing of God in our lives. So today we're not going to just continue this conversation. We're actually going to start an activation. How many of you love the activation part, you know? You know, it's one thing to, to read it, but then when you start activating the things of God into our lives, it, it brings a blessing upon blessing each and every day. So let me tell you this. God desires people to operate in the fullness of his complete blessing. How I many of you know God never does anything just halfway? He's never a partial God. He's a full, whole, and complete God. In every area of your life, every area of your life, he wants to bless he wants to bless you in your family. He wants to bless you in your business. He wants to bless you in the job. He wants to bless you in your finances. He wants to bless you in your marriage. How many of you know that today? God is the God of blessing. So because we're, uh, when we um, are slave to our work, because these, these messages, these thoughts uh, that we've been talking to you about are really surrounding the financial privilege that God gives us. And, and I want you to understand something, and I know we've been talking about this, but I just want to restate it every day in, uh, that we come together in this, is that God wants, never wants us to be tied to a financial burden. He wants us to be released to the financial blessing that he has for us. How many of you believe that God has a financial blessing for you? Okay, I want to make sure you're with me today on this. Okay, so, but we understand one thing, that when we are locked into the, maybe the struggle of finances in our lives, we will never be able to break through to the generosity that God has already promised us through the Word of God. So we must understand what it takes to get through, to break through to the generosity of the, the giving that God has placed in our lives. I want to point you to a scripture today in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. This is where we're going to read today. Uh, so that we understand God's word and God's principles for the financial blessing in our lives. It says in chap uh, chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Everybody say small crop. Nobody wants a small crop. We want everything that God has for us, Amen. Okay, let's go on. But the one who plants gener generously, and I want you to make sure you're, you're underlining if you're reading in your Bible or if you have an app on your phone that you're, that you're following along with, make sure you're taking serious 
believe the very thoughts that God has in this passage of Scripture. And I want you to make note for all the times he talks about generous, generosity uh, in, in your life and in the life that he has planned for you. But he said the one who plants generously will get a what? Generous crop. Okay, say generous. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly on or in response to pressure. For God loves a, a person who gives generously. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. How many of you love sharing? Unless it's your favorite, right? And then you're like, no, I want it all. No, you always love, you love sharing. Okay. So we share. And, and then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share. And as the scripture says, they share freely and give what, how generously to the poor their good deeds will be remembered forever, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. Who does that? Oh, I thought you went to work for that. No, God provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and, and increase your resources. How many say, I need increase? And then produce a great harvest of what? Generosity in you. Verse 13, uh, excuse me, 11. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank who? You? God. Because everything comes from God. Because everything belongs to God, and we are just his caretakers of everything that he has ever blessed and given us in our lives. You say, but, but I own the title. No, you don't. God does. It may be in your name, but it was from God. And we have to always remember that, that God is our blessor. He puts his ing on our bless, so we become a blessing. Are you a blessing? Are you a blessing from God? Yes, turn to that person next to you and say, you're God's blessing. You're God's blessing. So here, Apostle Paul is teaching the believers how to approach giving uh, as a part of their everyday lives. He's teaching them that he compares money to seed because in that day and time, that was the, the general way that people had a lot in their lives uh, was through the, the produce or the things that they grew, they farmed. And, and I, this came very, very apparent. This scripture became very apparent to me uh, quite a few years ago when we did a, a missions trip to India. And we were in the middle of a service. We had music and praise and worship going on. And, and there were already people there. The service was going. And, and I, I was sitting on the side of the platform there. And I watched this woman who had arrived late to the to, to the meeting, and she had two young children in tow, but she had a sack on her back. And she walked down the center aisle in the middle of the worship service. She walked all the way down to the platform and poured out a whole bag full of rice on the platform. And God said, remember that scripture in 2 Corinthians? That's exactly what I mean. See, she had nothing else. That was what she had in her, in her hands. That's what God had blessed into her life, into her home, was that rice. And she carried it. They didn't, you know, it wasn't, she wasn't late to church because there was so much traffic. She actually had to walk to church. It was late. It was an evening service. And she walked all the way from wherever she lived, and I don't know where, but she made sure that no matter what was going on, she was going to bring her tithe to the house of God. And she placed it right there on the, on the stage because she wanted God to know. I don't care. I don't think she really cared about anybody else seeing it, but she wanted to make sure that God knew, I am bringing what you have blessed into my house and into my hands, and I'm giving it back to you. Maybe we need to do that today. Huh? So, Paul's teaching this principle here in, in, uh, into them that, you know, we, we, we're not, I, I'm, I don't think a lot of us are farmers or that we, we have that as our source of income. We have money. We go to work. We earn a paycheck. So the seed that, that Paul is referencing here in 2 Corinthians is really talking about money for us here today. 
And I want, to note, I want you to notice that there's something here called the law of sowing and reaping. Point number one today, do you know that what you sow, you're also going to reap? Isn't that what Scripture says? But do you also know that by which you sow, the measure that you meted out to sow, in other words, however much you plant, that's exactly what you're going to reap. That's the, the sum total of it, you know. Uh, again, so we're going to talk about that. Number one, the sowing and reaping. And if you look at that at first glance, it seems simple enough to, to us. But what I want you to focus on is a few things here today in that particular passage of Scripture that we read. I want to kind of explode that for you so that we can extrapolate some of the principles of God for our lives. Number one, you will only reap the exact same thing that you sow. You're only going to get back what you sow. So if you're a farmer and you go out there and you plant corn, that farmer is expecting corn to come up, is he not? He's not expecting watermelons, although that might be a good alternative especially in the summer, but he's expecting corn. So what you sow, that's what you're going to reap. It's going to come back to you in that very same thing. You make a plan on what and when and where you're going to plant and sow that, and God is going to say, whatever you sow, I'm going to bless. I'm going to make sure there's a harvest come through that. So you reap more. Number one, I want you to understand this too. You reap more than what you sow because how many of you know you can plant one seed I can plant one seed. How many of you were here last night and, and you tasted some of that roasted corn? <sighs> I'm telling you what, that was, that was the, the, the young people say, that was the bomb. It, it was good. I had butter. I had mayonnaise. I had, I had everything else, Parmesan cheese. I don't know what was on that little tray he had there, but I was putting everything on it, you know. And it was good. But you see, there was a farmer who planted a seed thinking not, I'm not going to get just one ear of corn. I'm going to get a whole stalk full of corn. So then I'm not, and that's the same principle here. If you plant one thing, God is not saying you're only going to get one thing back. I'm going to bless everything that you do. I'm going to give you more abundantly, more than what you could ever believe and ask for. Because that's who I am. I'm a God of more. How many of you want to serve the God of more? Amen. So imagine this. You've been given a large amount of corn. What are you going to do? Are you going to hold on to that bag and put it in your pocket? Or are you going to take just one kernel of corn out and say, well, I'll just plant this one corn, uh, kernel of corn and, and I'll hold on to the rest? You see, that's many times what we do. We expect God just to bless the one. And he said, I am trying to bless the one, and, and you're not even accepting that blessing for the one thing. You've got to plant more. If you want more, if you want me to be the God of more, you've got to plant more. So... It's important that we also accept where and when we plant that. Every farmer knows there's a planting season. There's a time that, that we get ready to plant that. And in, in the heart of God, he wants us to be willing and ready to plant at any moment in our lives. And when I say plant, I'm talking about being a blessing. How many of you want to be a blessing to God? And if you're a blessing to God, then you must be a blessing in this earth. But you have to understand the resources that you need in order to do that. And God wants to unlock those for you in your life. Okay, we can say it like this, that the seed is, has been given to us by uh, our Heavenly Father so that we could plant a field that would be a harvest for many to enjoy. How many of you feel like you're generous in your life? How many of you want to be more generous in your life? We do. We want to become as generous as God needs us to be in our lives. So when we plant, we expect what? I expect to become a partner with God. How many of you want to go in business with God? How many of you know God's never failed? So, I mean, how many of you want to, you know, go into a business knowing that it's never going to fail? Because in the partnership with God, he never fails. We have now transferred, in the, what we've been talking about in the past few weeks, we've transferred that, that earthly seed into a kingdom authority. When we allow God to use what we have, when we give back to God what he has blessed into our lives, and we allow him to use that, we become now part of the blessing of God in this world. Now, sometimes we want to hold on to that blessing. But God says, I'm, I'm blessing you to be a blessing. And so that seed that we put into the ground, we're expecting what? Just one little stalk to come up? Well, no, I want a whole fruit full, okay? So if I plant a, let's say, a bucket of seeds, I'm going to get a bushel, bushel of fruit or a, a bounty, if you will. If I plant a whole bushel then, uh, in the field, I'm going to get a field full of the blessing of God. See, it's the multiplication system of God that we must understand. He doesn't just replace one for one. 
He places, he replaces over and over again, multiplied blessings into our lives. So you plant a seed, you get a bucket full, and it continues to go on. So Paul is saying here that money is our seed. How many of you have some money? Y'all afraid to raise your hand because you know I'm going to take an offering at the end of this, aren't you? You know I'm going to take one. So if we choose to keep that seed, which is our money, if we choose to keep it in our pocket, God can't do anything with it. He can't bless us. Why? Because we haven't transferred it from the earthly kingdom into the heavenly kingdom. We have to take it out and say, God, this is yours, and I'm going to bless it back into the kingdom so that you can take that seed and plant a harvest field for me and my family and my house to be a blessing to everything and everyone that you would call. So that's what Paul was saying is money is, is, is our seed. And we have, to, we have to choose to give that to God and plant it or allow God to plant it. Now, the first fruit, how many of you heard of that term before, the first fruit? If you haven't heard of that, that's God is saying, I need the first 10% of, of your income, your tithing is what that's called in the Bible. And so that I can plant that for you. You see, God just doesn't hold on to it, you know. He's not just saying, just give me that 10% so I can put it in my pocket. He's saying, give me that 10% back so I can plant a field and you can reap the harvest of the blessing that I've already planned for you through the obedience of your heart. Many times we look at Christians and, and, and we look at the church around us and we say, well, why is God blessing that person? And why, and why is he blessing that? But he's not blessing me. How come? And all I can tell you is maybe you haven't applied the sowing and reaping principle in your life. Maybe you're still holding on to a pocket full of seed or you're still holding on to the money that God is saying, I need you to show me that you trust me with that. Give me that 10% and I will bless you exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask. See, as, as legal citizens that we've been talking about of the kingdom of God, as we are legal citizens in the kingdom of God, how many of you know you're a child of God? You have access to the very throne room of heaven. You can go directly and speak to God yourself. You don't have to have anybody else in the room with you. You don't have any, you don't even have to have some holy oil that you expect, you know, if you expect that to get you closer there. No, all you have to do is just come boldly before the throne of God. This is the word of God speaking to, that says to us, come boldly before the throne of God and make our petitions known to him. We've told you a few of the stories in the Bible. I want to reiterate those for you today so that you can continue to understand the principles of sowing and reaping. I talked to you about the two fishes and the five loaves. How many of you remember that story? Right? Just last week we told you that God would take, uh, uh, I, I, I used a funny phrase, I said God would take, you know, two Laguna Madre fish combo sandwiches and he'd feed 20,000 people. Now how many of you have enough faith? to go order two Laguna Mata fish uh, combo sandwiches and bless them and try to feed 20,000 people. But you have that authority in the kingdom of God whenever you have given him everything, everything that he asks and requires. So he took those, that boy's two fish and he, he fed them and they just, you know, took 12 baskets home. Then we talked about Potiphar. This is the one that really stumped me for a long time in my life. He took Potiphar. He was a man, an unrighteous man, a, a non-Christian. He didn't go to church. He didn't go to synagogue. But yet he, had, he had basically bought Joseph as a slave, brought him into his house, saw the hand of God and the obedience of Joseph that he worshiped God every day of his life and put everything, Potiphar put everything that he owned into the hands of Joseph. And in a famine, when Egypt was going through a famine, Joseph had stored up enough grain for the whole country to be able to prosper, even in a famine. How many of you would love for God to place that burden upon your heart, to be faithful enough to play, even in the culture and the environment that we're living in today, to store up enough in your household to be able to serve our whole community, not our community, our whole nation. He can do that. He did it with Joseph. How many remember the story of Peter? Peter was in the fishing business. He had a boat, and, and he fished all night, and yet he caught nothing. But when Jesus came onto the scene, and he said, Peter, I want to advance you in your fishing business. I want to become a partner with you in this thing that we're doing together. And Peter said, here's my boat. And so Jesus said, okay, I'm going to take this boat out. Now I want you to throw your nets on the other side. And he did. And what? He could not bring in all the fish. Because anytime you partner with Jesus, there is always more than enough. 
It is God's nature to multiply and increase us all the time. Not just in certain seasons of our lives, but in every day. If you're obedient and faithful every day, then God will be obedient and faithful every day in your life. And when our natural comes into an agreement with his supernatural, watch out because you're about to be exceedingly blessed abundantly more than you can believe for. Last week we began to talk about giving your money a name. But really you already have done that, have you not? Every dollar that you make already has a name. Some of it may sound like, you know, you may have given it the name of mortgage. Well, I've got to pay my mortgage this month. Uh, oh, some of it may sound like a car payment. I've got to pay, I've got to pay my car payment. I, I've got to pay my cell phone bill, you know, that thing going up all the time. I've got to pay for the, the water that comes into our house. I've got to pay for electricity. We name our money. It's already named. But do you know that God has named some of your money as well? He said that first 10% is mine. You ever wonder why God wants us to let go of that first 10%? Because he wants us to transfer that earthly kingdom to a heavenly kingdom. He wants our minds to be changed, that we live in a cursed environment, in a cursed society, but we do not. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We're in this world, but we're not of it. Are you of this world? Or are you in this world? I am in it, but I'm just passing through. I have a better place, a higher place that God has called us to. So he wants us to give him that back, that first 10% to say what? I'm in agreement. I'm in a partnership. I'm going to buy into this with you, God, in every way. So he's named that first 10%. He calls it the tithe. See, God, if you give God what he requires, again, he's going to plant that seed, that field of harvest for you and what you are planning in your life. So, for those of you who are, let's say, understand that principle of sowing and reaping, I'm going to introduce you to giving that next piece of that a, a name. Because I believe God wants us to believe for even more. How many of you want more? I believe God wants us to believe for more than we have already believed for even in this very difficult moment, I know a lot of us in our, in our lives have walked through this year in very difficult moments. Some of us lost loved ones. Some of us have lost jobs. But you know what I've also heard over and over and over again? as Even as we've been teaching this over the last few weeks, in the last couple of weeks, I've had a lady came up to me and said, I want to tell you a sto my story. I love stories. How many of you love stories? And I love hearing good stories. I love hearing stories of faith. And, and this, this lady said, you know, uh, we, we have been coming to church for a while and, 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 and believing that God has something bigger and better for us in our lives. And, and, and Pastor Joe Eric was talking on, on one Sunday about uh, his giving talk and, and talking about testing God in our giving. And he said, you know, we, we, weren't, we weren't tithing at the time. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, because he kept saying, you know, you, God is saying, test me, test me, test me. He said, I, I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start today. I'm going to start testing God. You can read all 66 books of the Bible. And the only time you'll ever find God saying, test me, is right there in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. He said, test me this. She said, so we started, we're going to test God. And we started giving our 10%, our tithe, our first fruits to God. And she said, you know, uh, I was working for a company and, and uh, doing, you know, loving my job. And then a, a, an opportunity came for me to take another position in the company, but it was in Austin. And so we prayed about it and felt like God was saying, yes, take it. And so I took that job and it doubled my salary. How many of you would want your salary doubled? Well, if you don't, I want you to pray that God will double mine. <laughs> just, you know, maybe you don't have enough faith for yours, but just have faith for mine. <laughs> and just because of the obedience, God said, I see your faith and I see your obedience and I'm planting seeds of harvest for you and I'm going to increase you. And not only did he increase her, but her daughter was looking for a job and was doing some just random uh, waitressing and, and just not making enough money and, and, and just praying and asking God, you know, I, I just need a better job. 
Well, she took the job in Austin. The company offered her daughter her job here in San Antonio, and they like tripled her income. Why? Because God is a God of blessing. Y'all still are not getting it. I know, I know. Let me give you another story then. Because we all love stories, don't we? We love stories. We had a lady last night come up to us and say, you know, um, I just wanted to share this with you. Because God has been just so good. And, and, and um, you know, even as you've been talking about this, we've been believing. We've been, we started to believe that God was going to do something for us. And there was, there was a need in our lives. And I could see that need coming. And, and I'm recently divorced. And, and I have a couple of kids. And so I just knew that there was going to be, you know, some things coming down the road that, that I was going to need some help with. And so last week... You were talking and, and you asked us to raise our hand and pray uh, for those who had a financial need in their lives and you were going to pray. And I said, yes, I did. I, I sure did. So what I want to tell you, I went to work on Monday. And on Friday, I got my paycheck and there was a $500 bonus on there. I believe it was because I raised my hand and said, God, I have a need. You know my need before I ask. Isn't that what the Bible says? He says he knows your need before you ask. And, and God knew that. That knee was coming, and he already provided for me. She said, not only that, but also my supervisor came up to me and said, hey, we're actually going to increase your pay by a dollar an hour as well. Why? Because we serve a God of more. Do you serve the God of more? Yes, we do. We do. And we have to be expecting that through the obedience of our heart to God in that way. So those are the things that I love. I could tell you another one. We just had it this morning, right after our first service. A lady walked up to us and said, Pastor, I just have to share this story with you. So I stood there like, I love stories. Come on. Let, let it go. You know, feed me. Feed me. She said, you know, we've had a difficult time this year. We've lost our mother to COVID. But, you know, in that process, my, or my grandmother, excuse me, my grandmother to COVID. And she said, in that process, we just stayed faithful to God. We knew that God was still in control, and, 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 and we had to hear the voice of God. We, we kept praying. She said, I kept telling my husband, let's just pray and listen for the voice of God. God will tell us. And she said he kind of, he had a reduction in, in his work and, and was kind of out of work, so it was just me and my paycheck, and, and that was really what was helping us. And we had actually moved in with my grandmother because she had been sick for a while, even before she got COVID, and, and we were helping her and taking care of the things there along with my grandfather. But then she said, you know, God spoke to me that I needed to quit my job too. <laughs> She's like, what? We need, I, you know, my husband's not working. We're living with my grandmother and, or, and she's really sick. And, and, you know, we're trying to help out with things around here. And you're telling me I need to quit my job? I said, but I, I just knew I needed to be obedient. How many of you know obedience is better than sacrifice? <laughs> that's not my words. That's God's. So she said, I, I, I just quit. I quit my job. And just started helping around, helping my grandfather. And, and my, my grandmother had to go into the hospital, and there's a long story with that. And, and ended up passing away. She said, then I had a good friend call me and say, um, I got a job for you. It's a supervisor position. And if you're willing and want the job, it's yours. I'll hold it for you. She said, well, let me pray. I need to talk to God. I need to ask him. What do I need to do, God? I mean, if you know God will never fail you. I mean, if God will never give you a wrong answer. And she said, God said, okay, take that job. She said, I took the job and it was double the pay that I was getting from my old job. Why? Because we serve a God of what? We serve a God of increase. A God of more. A God of blessing. A God that already has good gifts, already planned for you. Already stored up in heaven for you. So. What is God doing? He's saying to us, will you transfer your allegiance from a cursed earthly society to a heavenly kingdom society, to my place, to my plan? Will you plant your seed into my fields and not the fields of this world because my fields will always prosper and grow? That's what he's asking of us today. You see, I know that a lot of us have had different responses and different things happen to us in this crisis Sometimes it's a matter of prayer, and sometimes we think about the pandemic that seems too big to overcome, but our God is more than an overcomer, 
And we will see the blessing of God in our lives constantly, no matter what our condition of our world is in, because he is not bound to that. See, God's word says he gives seed to the sower. Are you a sower? Are you a faith sower in the kingdom of God? It doesn't say that he gives seed to the hoarder, those that are going to put it in their pocket and just hold on to it. He said, I give seed to the sower. Those who are going to invest in my field. Those who are going to plant in my name. Those who are going to believe by faith that I can do all things. See, you have to make your allegiance to God today. Make your allegiance not into this earthly kingdom, but into a heavenly kingdom. Align yourself with a godly kingdom. Because you are a rightful citizen of heaven. We're only in this world for a short period of time, but our eternity is in heaven forever. Eternity forever in heaven. So I'm going to ask you to do something that maybe you weren't realizing you're gonna, you needed to do when you walked in today. But ever in the seat backs there in front of you, there's a tithing envelope. If you're a, a family today, you and your spouse today, if you're a single earner in your home, if you're single today, whomever you are, if you get a paycheck, I want you to grab one of these envelopes because I want us to do something today that I believe God is going to bless more than you've ever seen him bless you before in your life. If you believe, if you're a faithful tither already to the kingdom and to the house of God, Thank you, number one, because we have been able to do a lot of things, just like we did last night for our community. I had dozens of people come up to me last night, at least a dozen, I shouldn't say dozens, at least a dozen people come up to me last night that do not go to church here, and they said, thank you for doing this every year. It is a blessing that we can just come right here in our community, have Santa pictures, eat some great roasted corn, and we had some sausage on a stick that was not bad at all either, was it not? Some of you are like, yeah. And you do so many things. This is one of the ladies said, you do so many things for us here in this community. We want to thank you. I said, thank you for just coming and being a part of this. This is for you. It is for you. And that, that's why we do this. That's why we give into this place. You know, we give into this place because we asked, we had a, a man who broke his neck uh, on the job. And so we helped them just be sure that every all their needs were taken care of in their lives. So we wanted to be a blessing not only to our people, but to our community as well. And we've reached out to them as well. And then our missionaries is that who also uh, go around the world spreading the good news of the gospel. We just had Renee West appear uh, in October that has been in Thailand for 15 years and sowing into that ministry so that God will continue to bless the people around the world. It is a truly blessing for us to be able to help and share what we uh, what is given by God here. So I want to just encourage you to grab one of these envelopes. If you are that faithful tither, thank you, number one, thank you. Because because of you, we've been able to reach so many people. There, there's no way that we can even tell you the number that we're able to reach. But what I want you to do is I want you to name your seed because I believe that God wants us to not only look at our past and the faithfulness that he has had to us, but looking forward. You know, God has already planned our 2021. He's already got it planned for your life. He's already got your days there already appropriated and the blessing that he wants to bring into your life. But my, what he might be waiting for is for you to plant that seed for 2021. I want you to name it. We talked about naming money. Name it. What do you need? What is your need? Maybe there's a current need right now, just like the lady who, who shared with me last night, that there was a current need coming in her life. And God provided that $500 bonus for Friday. Maybe there's a need right now in your life. And you want to believe God for it. I want you to, by faith, because if you've been with us on this, we understand that under the covenant of Abraham's faithfulness to God, we have been, we have been set aside and given the rightful authority of the kingdom of heaven. If you have not have stepped into that faithful tithing area of your life yet, I want to encourage you to start that because God wants to be planting seeds for you. He doesn't want us to live in a financial bondage. He wants us to live in financial freedom. 
stories in the Bible. I've given you those personal stories, even one today that has happened. This lady said, God has been faithful. Are you want, do you need God to be faithful in your life? I want you to write something on that envelope. Maybe you have something to give today. Maybe you don't. But I want you to write something on that envelope that says, I'm believing for God and put a seed amount offering for whatever you're saying. This is my need today. This is what I see. Maybe it's something that, you, that he has planned for us. I already believe he's putting things in my heart for us to accomplish and do in 2021. But he's saying, you got to plant a seed now. How many of you know when you plant a seed, it takes a little while for it to grow? And he's saying, through your obedience and faithfulness, I'm going to grow. If you're watching me on, you can go to our app, ltl.church. Go to our app, and you can press that give button, and it will give you an opportunity to plant a seed right there. And I know God is a God of faithfulness. I know he has never failed me. Melissa and I have trusted God over and over again when he has spoken to our hearts and he said, had a need that he did not meet. I've never ever had a day in my life where I didn't have something that God was blessing into my life. And I constantly just plan it, plan it, plan it, plan it. Why? Because I know when it's in the harvest, when it's in the kingdom's authority, the harvest is going to be greater than I could do if I'm just holding it in my pocket. I want our ushers to prepare to receive this from you today. What do you need from God? What is the need in your life today from God? Would it shock you if I told you that it's already there? Let me read you this scripture. It's the one I've probably read a thousand times at least minimum in my life. But I've never found it to be more true than it is today. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, bring the whole, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not there will not be room enough to store it. That's what God is saying to you today. That if you will test me in this, I've already got enough for you. But if you'll plant some more seed, if you'll take it out of that pocket and believe and plant it in my, my kingdom field of harvest, it'll grow up more than you could ever believe or ask for. There's room enough. But you have to test him. So I would encourage you to do that today. I want to pray for you today. So if you have that envelope and you've already said, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to test you with this. Or if you're putting something on there that you're believing for that God is going to do, I still want you to hold this up because I'm going to pray. Just like I prayed last week for that lady who got the $500 increase. I didn't know it was coming. God knew her need. I didn't. But I knew that my God is faithful. And I don't want you to miss a blessing and I don't want to miss a story because I love stories. So if you're believing for God, I want you to be bold enough to just hold that op envelope open or up right now. And let's pray together that God is going to be the God of blessing in our lives. And no matter whether it comes tomorrow, next week, or into the 2021 year, He is still going to be faithful in every area of our lives. As we are obedient to the tithe and the offering of God, He will always be faithful to bring the harvest. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. You see every envelope that's lifted before you today. You see every heart that is pledging. You see those who are online today, God, who are also saying to you, I am going to believe. I'm going to step into faith with you, God. I'm going to become a partner in this thing called sowing and reaping. And I'm going to believe that you're going to do greater things than I could ever do for myself. And God, I trust you with this. People to this 
uh, culture to the those and I know that there are more in the name of Jesus we pray and everybody says well thank you so much for watching this week's message if you made the decision to follow Jesus we want to know to celebrate you but more importantly we want to walk alongside you and connect with you in this new journey go to our website and fill out the life change card so we can know about this new decision that you made also, we would love to stay connected with you throughout the week. And you can do that by following us on all of our social platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you guys, and we'll see y'all next week.